Welcome, fellow wine lovers. This is the Wine Ghost Podcast. I'm Mate Vas, sommelier and seeker of hidden stories behind the wine labels. For wine tasting clips and video interviews with my guests, please look for the Wine Ghost on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But now, please grab a glass and listen to how today's ghost got out of the bottle. The 31st podcast episode centers the esteemed Künstler winery from the Rheingau wine region of Germany. Gunther Künstler lavishly showed me a line of his Pinot Noirs from 1999 till the barrel sample of 2019. It was one in a lifetime experience and proved me the ageability and complexity of the Rheingau Pinot Noirs. You can also hear the origin story of this elegant grape variety in Rheingau and how it started in Asmanshausen. Mr. Künstler has also revealed his favorite wines and the rainbow effect, discussed different wine glasses, told his opinion about biodynamics and copper usage, and shared some tips on how wineries could prepare for climate change. Gunther Künstler is a well of knowledge with the German precision and professionalism. It's not only a memorable chat, but a valuable course for any wine lovers as well. Enjoy this following hour and feel free to watch our tasting and conversation on the Wine Ghost YouTube channel from a marvelous hall in the Künstler Villa. Enjoy. So, Mr. Künstler, uh, thanks for taking the time. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Beautiful line in front of us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now we are drinking Grüne Veltina, right? Um, Grüne Veltina, this is a, a homage to the country my father is from. He is, he is from Moravia, a country which was belonging to the Austrian Empire. Mm-hmm. And uh, after World War II, the German-speaking uh, population mm-hmm. were forced to leave the country after making wines there for 800 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he came to, uh, however, he had an education in winemaking and he became uh, a regisseur uh, of different wineries, and yeah. finally he moved to Rokan on, on February 1st, 1951. Okay. And, uh, and then he was the manager of a winery, and in 1965 he decided to make his own winery. Or to, re, uh, to re-establish mm. his family winery. Mm. This was in 1965, and it's very, it's very uh, difficult to imagine in a, in a year which was so bad, yeah. 1965 was a very horrible vintage to uh, be um, self-employed. And as a homage to his uh, lost um, uh, country, we, um, we together planted with Grüner Medina in a very loamy soil. Okay. Grüner Medina likes to have a uh, loamy soil. Mm-hmm. Riesling is rocky. Yeah. More, yeah. but also recent pros of also in, in um, loam and clay, mm-hmm. so we have tasted here. But uh, Grüner Veltina likes a lot of clay and loam because uh, it wants to have fertile soils with a, with a big water content. It doesn't like to suffer. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. And uh, we, we are doing just a, as a toy, just a little memory, a homage to his. Most country we are doing the Grüner Berliner. Which, what kind of Grüner Berliner is the aim of? What, what are you? This is for? this is for uh, what we do is we do roughly uh, twelve hundred bottles of Grüner Berliner year mm-hmm. by year. And surprisingly, it, it was also our Secretary of State used this wine several times. Okay. Especially for the conference of all the German-speaking uh, European countries. Mm-hmm. That means Switzerland, Austria, Liechtenstein, Belgium, because in Belgium is also part of German-speaking yeah. people, uh, Germany, and Liechtenstein, Switzerland, Austria, uh, Luxembourg. Okay. And Mr. Kurz, the Austrian secretary, said was <laughs> was really uh, surprised at William Lina from Germany, but uh, we wrote on the back label why we do that. On the back label, we, we, we are writing uh, this, this uh, our wine was established in 1648 and re-established in 1945. Mm-hmm. 
uh, or long in 2,000 square meters, and we do 1,200 liters. So we have, we are reducing the yield yeah. to point out uh, much more the, the character of the wine because Bruno Berliner he likes to carry a lot of fruit, mm -hmm. and if the fruit is too much, you know the wine is not there when you have a liquid. Exactly. And in terms of vinification, so how long was it on the on the leaf? And uh, in terms of vinification, uh, vinification we do uh, careful heat stamping. Okay. And, and the cold maceration on on the skins for mm -hmm. for several uh, hours, or roughly uh, roughly twenty four hours, to extract all mm -hmm. the, the definition of Bruno Berliner. For me, I want to um, harvest very ripe grapes. And what is ripe? Ripe is when you see the seeds in, uh, in the berry when mm -hmm. it's ripe. And when when if you, if, you, if, you, if you lift if you lift a, a bunch of uh, of uh, a bunch of a grape, yeah. and you hold it into the sun, and mm -hmm. if you see then the seeds, when it's ripe, and no skin should be destroyed by botrytis. This is perfect. Okay. This is uh, what we what we are trying to achieve. Hmm. And I think you did. So it's only stainless steel. Or it's stainless steel. steel. It's stainless steel and. Uh, I think this wine has a bit more warmness than I expected, so I wouldn't put it maybe in the right go in the in the left one, but I would put it maybe in Kampal or a bit more like really a bit more richer yeah. soil. Yeah. Um, it's a richer soil, of course. Yeah. It's um, but the of course before we go, we are comparing all the wines with uh, our wines, so it was being compared with all mm -hmm. big friends from Lower Hau. Yeah. And so we had also a take from from Emmerich Kino side by side and uh, some Hirschberger wines as well. Um, we, of course, this is a toy, you have tested all the Rieslings, yeah. and most of the Rieslings. And now, we, before we move into the Reds, I would like to show you also Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. Which is also uh, a little homage to, to Styria. Do you also taste Austrian wines in your free time, or uh, to, just to compare maybe? Uh, I have been many times in, in Austria. I spent uh, much time there because my father, always in June, they, we had uh, every time in June we had a convention mm -hmm. at, uh, in the wine fiddle. Mm -hmm. And in wine fiddle and also in Moravia, mm -hmm. uh, just to celebrate uh, a lost country, mm -hmm. and this is always in the middle of June. And so I took my father, I was the driver, and he took me around. And so I, I have seen Moravia, and mm -hmm. um, of course we have some friends also in 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 Weinviertel and Wachau and also in Syria. Yeah. So I, it's however it's in in, in my needs. Yeah. So I and I like to taste the the wines from there as well because they. They're trying to produce really very good wines, and they are work, working very clean, and they have a great passion, and and uh, well, there's a lot of of energy there. Mm -hmm. And what's maybe the the defining factor? If you, if I taste the Künstler wine, what 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 do you want to get in every wine? What is your style? What you want to? Um, I would like to answer it in a philosophy. Please. Uh, wine, good wine is like watching a rainbow. A rainbow is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And why a rainbow? Because after a heavy rain shower, yeah. you have a very clear sky. This is a symbol of, of health. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you drink alcohol, you should be healthy. Yeah. Okay. Then you have uh, the sunshine. The sunshine is the symbol for communication. Mm -hmm. so, it's not very enjoyable to drink wine by its own and alone. 
Then you have the essential colors of, uh, of the nature, if you watch a rainbow. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the symbol for natural production. We are working without uh, herbicides since 1992. Mm -hmm. And so we have no problem with glyphosate. And we do not use copper because uh, copper is a heavy metal and I do not understand why it's allowed for organic. Yes, I do not understand that. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask somebody in the street, uh, what, do you, what do you think about a heavy metal in a liquid? And they are like, you stupid? To mm -hmm. open and this is the definition is organic. I think this is, is, is not, uh, not fair. Okay, but this is another thing. And here we have. Um, and, and the rainbow is very long, number of symbols, long. I would like to have a very long aftertaste. Mm -hmm. The aftertaste starts at the beginning, then I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. I want to create a long taste. And harmony, but what is harmony? Harmony is, is rare if you have from each ingredient yeah. enough and not too much. Mm -hmm. This is harmony. Enough acid, not too much acid. Enough alcohol, not to the right. Mm -hmm. It should be balanced. Balance is for me a very important thing. So now we have here Sauvignon Blanc. Grown on limestone. And, um, Which is not so typical for Sauvignon Blanc, right? Okay, um, yeah, but it's uh, limestone and, and, and some slate. Yeah. There's also some silex, or all kind of silex here. And uh, we want to point out the um, pure seal, mm -hmm. but we do not want to overstretch it. Yeah. We're going to have a, a developed um, Sauvignon Blanc, but not overdeveloped. Yeah. It's, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc is uh, dancing on the edge of the knife because um, we have to have the right, the right ripeness. Yeah. But if Sauvignon Blanc is too cream, then it's not enjoyable. If Sauvignon mm -hmm. Blanc is too ripe, then the typicity of Sauvignon Blanc will disappear. Yeah. So you have to pick mm. really at the right point. Yeah, but it's, through, it's really on the edge of exotic fruits and ri really ripe peach for me. Mm. And I I don't miss the gooseberry aromas and I don't really miss this exotic cream fruits. Because I think it's, we are in the old world, so to say, so it's a really difficult wine of Sauvignon Blanc. So it's not overripe, it's not... And it's yeah. not only linear, it doesn't mm -hmm. run, run through your mouth, which uh, most of the Sauvignon Blancs do. Mm -hmm. It has a bit more broader atmosphere, so... Yeah, we, we do 80% Riesling, but each other variety we like to do on an international standard, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make any sense for me to, uh, to bottle uh, another variety yeah. just in order to, to have it okay. as for some reason behind it. Yeah. And um, so we do also some other vineyard, but now we are switching over to, to yeah. our Chardonnay. Yeah. And in terms of vinification, like uh, you already talked about your vineyards, but uh, do you mostly de the wines, right? Um, or I'm not a... We do not uh, de the Chardonnay, but everything else is de -stemmed. Yeah, why? Um, with Chardonnay, you have a little bit more reduction okay. through the stems, and um, and I think here with Grüner um, Veltliner to point out um, the typicity of this variety is better without stems, mm -hmm. and uh, and Riesling is also completely destemmed mm -hmm. and Pinot mm -hmm. Noir so. Mm -hmm. Beautiful salto glass, it's just a match with them. Oh, and do, you, do you usually use salto glasses? Or? We are using salto glasses for our, uh, for our uh, tasting because if you have salto or if you have very good glass, maybe it's a really good glass, mm -hmm. um, then uh, you have a much Better possibility to dissolve. Okay. Because this is kind of a gas chromatograph. Gas chromatograph. This is a, 
This is the uh, machine in the chemistry where you can really measure the right amount mm -hmm. of every ingredient. Okay. And I think well, here those glasses we are so they are so crucial. Mm -hmm. They are pointing out each port. And this is um, what we like to to have because we have to we have to see also our customers side of the table. Because we have we have to have the ability to understand the ones with their um, eyes, with their taste, with their mm -hmm. imagination, whatever. And uh, very good glasses help you to make a very best decision. So we this is a, a whole circle. The beginning of the right uh, material to plant, uh, the right spacing, the right soil, and also the, the right uh, the right pruning. We do a soft pruning. We have the first one in the country who, uh, which is doing the soft pruning. We started that in 1912, uh, in, in 2012, basically, and uh, and we do the hopefully the right descending and the right uh, pressing and. This is the reason why we do not, since uh, 2016, where we have changed uh, mm -hmm. a lot in our cellar, um, there was no need of refining of the juice necessarily. No uh, gelatine, no. Uh, so vegan rice? Nothing. Just, mm -hmm. just pure the nature. The nature is offering so much to us. Mm -hmm. We should use it in the right way, but we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So, what is soft pruning? Soft pruning, which was established by uh, uh, Mr. Marco Simonit. Marco Simonit, he was an advisor in, in um, Colli Orientali. Uh, Orient mm -hmm. yeah. We are all stereo and uh, Slovenia. The former days were the heart of the Austrian Empire, mm -hmm. very in the center. And with the soft pruning, you only, you're not allowed to use a saw, mm -hmm. no big ones. You are you're only, only pruning in the, into the root of the second year. And this is allowing that the, that the old content of the wine is mm -hmm. growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And um, you do not hurt the, the system, the flowing system of the plant. Human beings, we have a terriers and beans. Yeah. And uh, the wine has flowing maxillae up and down. Mm -hmm. We have transportation of our blood, mm -hmm. and the plant has a trans uh, trans uh, transportation of the uh, of the water flow. Okay, and uh, in a system very similar to wing sanitaries. Mm -hmm. And if you make big mounds, the flowing goes smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And what does, how does the, the plant react in a stress situation? Mm -hmm. It will be a collapse. Mm -hmm. But if you allow the plant to grow a little, always a little bit year by year, then you um, do not hurt that system, point one, and you have always enough supply of the juice mm -hmm. at all time. And this is very important uh, to to keep um, as many as possible plants per hectare alive. Mm -hmm. For example, um, um, Bella Vista, sparkling uh, company in Italy, yeah. they do 20, uh, 200 hectares. Yeah. And with that system, they have gained 20% of the wines. Mm -hmm. That means 20 hectares. 20 hectares more wines, 20 hectares more yield, because uh, the wines were dying because of the big ones. Uh, what uh, people which were not educated mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. and so the soft pruning is a very intelligent um, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. an art of manufacturing, mm -hmm. to understand each wine because each plant should carry top fruit. Mm. And if you prune each wine in the same way, when there's no need to 
to run three times through a vineyard. Of course, this is marketing wise, it's perfect. Or, you know, selecting mm. like crazy. But if you ask the, the bank account, because you have to pay for it, mm -hmm. and it's not a very smart idea, it's good to choose the right point of harvest for each vineyard, not for each plant. And if every and if every plant is similar similar pruned, then you have perfect conditions. Okay. This is the system of Marco Siemens and, and his friends uh, CH and they established that system in in 1988. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we are doing that all over the world. For example, Rodover does it mm -hmm. in Morocco, mm -hmm. in the Champagne area. Um, Robert Mondavi does it, and also in, they do it in Chile, they do it in South Africa, and wherever. It's a very smart system because it was very impressive for me because um, there was a guy who introduced us yeah. into that system. And it was uh, 150 microns in the wine mm -hmm. And we were sitting in a, in a hall, and then you open the window, oh, come on, Let's, can you prune for us? That's fine. Yeah. The next time, come on, let's filter the wine. Oh, no, 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 you have to be educated. Listen, for pruning, you are hiring not educated pe uh, mm -hmm. people because you're not aware of the healthiness of the wines. Mm -hmm. But for filtration, for winemaking, oh, you have, of course you have to be educated. It's a big difference. So, from good vineyards, it's are coming good fruits. Mm -hmm. From good fruits, you can make the top wine without um, interrupting mm -hmm. the nature. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about so Chardonnay. Please. So the, the left one, also in my class, is that was in, in first field barrique. Uh, one with uh, less oak. It's okay. called Kalkstein. Okay. Kalkstein is That's uh, the right uh, last thing. Uh -huh. And um, we have a, a very old spot. There is an old map here, mm -hmm. and there was a, a point where uh, the Celtic people, two thousand five hundred years ago, had been picking for limestone. Okay. And after after them, the, the, the people, the Roman people, came because uh, mines. Then it was during the Roman times. It was called Moncantiacum, and it was the it was the biggest uh, city. Um, north of the Alps. Mm -hmm. Number two was Colonia and Kipina, today it's Cologne. Mm -hmm. And Augusta de Baron, when it's three. But Mainz uh, was uh, the point where steadily three legions were stationed. That means 18,000 soldiers plus mm -hmm. were people. Yeah. So, and um, and on this spot they have been digging for limestone and as you know the Chardonnay loves limestone. Sure. And by an accident I was persuaded by a good friend of mine 25 years ago and he said you have to plant there Chardonnay because this soil is so unique and so rare mm -hmm. um, in spite of the fact that the Chardonnay is number one mm -hmm. uh, in the world of white lands with 200,000 hectares as we have learned. <laughs> So very broad and kind of it's very well in the very acidity. So it's how long do you? Uh, it's 18 vintage, right? Was it? It's 18. Yeah. It's also very warm vintage. Or 18 was very warm. Mm. Yeah, but it's very pleasant, kind of kind of lower acidity, I would say. This is very really right spark. I wanted to, I wanted to show you also these varieties because nobody. Nobody knows about that. Mm -hmm. and everybody is surprised. Hey, this is really serious quality. And it's not only a toy. But the barrick one, I was actually a bit afraid, to be honest, on the nose, that it would be too much barrick influence, but it's not. I, I feel a bit much, a bit more wood tunnels, but it's just, um, it's just yeah. more complex. Yeah, it's, it's very well balanced, it's just, just a point. 
It's from the vineyard with the highest amount of limestone. And there's a tremendous uh, content of calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. And um, this fits so well uh, to, to Chardonnay. And um, as I said, I want to have it in, in balance something. Yeah. The wood is it a 60% new oak and 20% uh, second and third year. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good integration of everything. Yeah, totally. Okay. And also to uh, we have uh, also a lot drink flows, the drinkability for the wine is very important. The body language on the table should be all the portfolio glass and not the <laughs> Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. And what would you eat with it? Do you have like a special wine like, oatmeal that you would like with? I uh, I think um, veal would be good uh -huh. with mushrooms and uh, noodles. And the cream sauce, classic dish for that. Okay. Do you have a, also any special dishes for your GG Rieslings? I know it's a broader generalization because you have a lot of different profiles, but what, what do you like to eat with it? Most of them. I, I personally, this is, I personally, I like very much fish. Yeah. Although, uh, uh, Grilled uh, dorado would be okay. good, would be good, but also beef is um, mm. a wonderful dish with, uh, with uh, <laughs> to go with uh, a really dense riesling. Uh -huh. You also have some fishes in the in the line. Of course, it's uh, the line is getting healthier and healthier and cleaner and cleaner. Okay. And um, so we have also thunder and fish like that in the mm -hmm. line. So. Okay, perfect. So. But maybe it's just to go, go a bit under your skin, because okay. uh, if I can be really honest, you, I feel like you are a very precise German Geschäftsführer. That's my first impression, to okay. be honest. <laughs> maybe when, when you saw me in, in, in my vineyard suit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, just to go a bit under your skin, so what do, what do you like to drink in your free time and how do you like to spend it? Maybe if you are not in the library. Uh, oh, yesterday night we had hot sour uh, Eschendorfer Lump, Silvana, Gigi. Okay. And sometimes we do have Grüner Berliner from Franz Hirschberger. And we have also Zierig from Timmend, uh, uh, Sauvignon, and also Morino. I like a lot uh, Muscatella Piaz from Groß in Styria. Okay. I. Um, I like uh, Etienne Sosé, I like uh, Hut Sosé, okay. I read, I, I like also the very good Sauvignon from, from Tokara, okay. South Africa. Okay. And so uh, we are drinking around the planet, mm -hmm. just to, to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's interesting and uh, I communicate enough with, with all wines. To know what's going on, and it's like to it's it's good to compare, and but it's also to be knowledgeable uh, is also very important in, in the business. The business is growing, and mm -hmm. the variety and the variation of wines in the world is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I uh, like also to drink uh, some good uh, Tuscan wines. Mm -hmm. I'm not such a great fan of uh, Piemont, but I'm a fan of Rome. Okay, and. Uh, I like to have density, flavor, uh -huh. and mango. Okay. And I like also very good, uh, I like the good ones from Napa Valley, of okay. course. Because from Sonoma Valley, the very good Pinot Noirs. Mm. Central Coast is uh, also, uh, Santa Ines Valley is a hot spot for Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. for me. And also the Hirschwinget in Sonoma, uh, which is also a hot spot for Pinot Noir. I also like them too. So maybe if you are talking about it, you know, can we try some? Of course. Of course. <laughs> so you would like to move from, from young to old or from old to young? Uh, yeah, from uh, young to old. So I... So I... These are barrel samples? Yes. Okay. No, so for the Pinot Noir, you have to change it. This is 19, the other one is. Uh, okay. So for the Pinot Noir, you use mostly first field? So new oak or? No, no, no. I think um, 
Um, I'm a code maker. Yeah. I'm a tailor. Okay. And and so uh, if the uh, if the suit is too big for the guy, it means too much oak, and he's living in a tent. Mm -hmm. If if the uh, if the suit is too tight for the guy, lady, then she's packed, so uh -huh. it should fit. And, uh, and so for that, we have to we have to make. Uh, so nineteen. We are taking our time. So nineteen. Uh, how was this vintage so far? Nineteen. Uh, was also very very hot, very similar to 2018, but 2018 was dry as well uh, during harvest time, during September and during October. Mm -hmm. But but in 2019 we had twice a rainfall of 30 liters per square meter, and this was an indication especially after the second uh, rainfall, mm -hmm. for, for fungus for arthritis and things like that. And mm -hmm. we, had, we, had to, we had to sort a lot, which is what I really dislike. Um, okay, and okay. put your this one. Yeah. Um, I, I dislike that because it's very costly. And, but um, I... We managed it together and we have to reflect very, very seriously that we do have the Riesling and Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Riesling 80% yeah. uh, and Pinot Noir 15%. We do have 95% of our wines have a thin skin, so we are easily attacked by rainfalls mm -hmm. and we are building up. Okay. And this is this is a danger, but this is our history. We are doing here Pinot Noir. Uh, we are doing Riesling here since uh, 1435, and Pinot Noir since 11, 1135. Mm -hmm. So where is uh, there is no need to go into uh, to other varieties as far as I can. And would you say that uh, you use French variants, right? Yes. French and with the basic point we are using also large oak. Large oak means bigger than 600 liters. Mm -hmm. And for Pinot Noir, you always use barriques, but not always first few, but you always barrick. Uh, PS, okay. 228. Uh -huh. And the 19, which, where, where does it come from? It's also it's, it's, it's a, we have now a, a vertical uh, of a vineyard uh, Alchistan. Or which valley this is a uh, vineyard which is uh, very close to the confluence of the mine and the Rhine River. Uh -huh. Maybe direct uh, line would be 900 meters, something like that. And so this wine uh, has a, a microclimate of two rivers, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of sun reflection, yeah. a lot of captured water heat. In addition to that, it's just planted in the middle slope, so it's, it's always a little bit windy. So the moisture is always blown out. Okay. And uh, with a great ripeness potential and uh, yeah. And here you have it from 2019 yeah. until 2010. And 2000, yeah. 2010 was no, I have, to, I have to turn that around. Uh, 2010 has won the trophy for the best uh, German Pinot Noir after 10 years. Wow. It's something you don't do every day, probably. <laughs> I, I had, I had um, yesterday I had uh, also some sommeliers. Okay. And um, and they had a very serious interest in Pinot Noirs. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for this year. Okay. And uh, if, if we just look at the labels, because we see that uh, some of them changed over the time, right? So what was the consideration behind that? Because some of them are golden and some of them are... Yeah, um, that was my wife. She wanted to make <laughs> another label. And after 2012, it's not any, anymore uh, known as, uh, as um, Asterisk Gedeckt. 
it's known as a great growth, courses gewächst. And, uh, and now we think to make it a little bit more obvious, maybe it's it's very practical. We, we have a golden capsule and we have the golden bottom in the connection to point out of this mark, at least once our values ones. Um, and um, wow, I'm actually at 16 now. I'm going from 19, it's getting better. <laughs> yeah. But 15 was also very quite hard, right? Yeah. 16 was uh, moderate, 14 was very cool. But you know, so 15 is it's really in between the black and the red foods, but really in the right side. It's this is really what's, what's animating for me. It's, uh, I really rarely use this word. But it's I'm also a great fan of uh, 2016. How was 16? 16 was... Um, 16, 16, 16. Um, it was very wet springtime. Mm -hmm. Great difficulties doing flowering because it was so rainy. A great danger of... Um, Milieu, doing yeah. flowering, extremely dangerous. Mm. If you had missed the right day, this was a Friday for spray. Mm. The whole deal was gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> and fortunately, we do have very busy and very, uh, uh, we have a wonderful team, uh -huh. which is behind the winery and uh, they spray it. Mm -hmm. From the early morning until the mm -hmm. night, and so we, uh, because otherwise it was would have been too wet mm -hmm. to uh, to spray, because if the leaf is wet, then it's, it doesn't make any sense, yeah. and uh, the mildew uh, has developed like crazy. And in the spray spraying means what? What what is the situation? We in instead of copper, we are spraying uh, phosphoric acid. Well, 14, it gets more, a lot more tertiary aromas. So this really, it gets more this fine leathery aromas and fine this gamey notes. This this is where it starts for me, the 14, but it's still really fresh. I also had a, yeah, not a really a cooperation, but I, I um, changed some thoughts with Salto, with, um, with the glass company. Why did you miss Mr. Hinderlach now? Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I also seen some uh, Rita boxes. What, what do you would say that it's the difference, or do you see any difference? Maybe I'll go out of the record. Uh, I think um, probably we have to make really a, a comparison between Rita and Salto with the, with the Pinot Noir classes. What I didn't do so far. Mm. And uh, we had uh, two online tastings with with Riedel. Mm -hmm. This is a reason why we had the Riedel class. I really love the Riedel class. Mm -hmm. But uh, for our both companies are really very good. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, with this advantage of Southwest, we are easily to break. Yeah. So it's really it's very difficult. It's a wonderful class. It's very elegant. The, the reed class are a little bit stronger. Yeah. Hmm. But this is just the 14, is, the smell is. How was 14? Do you remember? Yes, of course. <laughs> we had, uh, we had uh, November during August, it was okay. so cold and so wet. Mm -hmm. And really, um, and also a heavy and a very rainy. Um, September and October as well, and uh, that was, uh, I would say, very cool year. Mm -hmm. 13 as well was also very cool, mm -hmm. and the next one, uh, 2012, was also very similar to 2016, moderate. Yeah. And how would you say these uh, vintages, so if you have like maybe a quarter vintage, this would age maybe well or better than the warmer? Or I wouldn't say that. This is, okay. this is a matter of uh, the manufacturing. 
So, uh, of course, there is a big influence by the year, but there is also influence by, by, by human beings. Mm -hmm. At 12, do I smell some light being in it? Mm -hmm. Could be right. Yeah. So what, what do you usually eat? Can you make maybe a local dish? Rheingau, Pinot Noir, Spiel, what is that? Beer. Beer. Beer from the Rheingau. With... Um, very good. Wow. Good name. 1999. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 97, 97 is also very good. 93 is, 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 is super. Yeah. But uh, we had in the, in the 90s, we had a bigger variation mm -hmm. of, uh, of quality. Yeah. Um, but with the, with the increase of wisdom and mm -hmm. of energy and of um, working more and more precisely, mm -hmm. because Pinot Noir is a comparison to, to Riesling, a very... Uh, it's a bitch. Yes. <laughs> a cat can be also a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. When it's fun, maybe it's a bitch. Can I try the fan as well? Yeah, 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 of course. This one was... Oh, I see. The uh, 2010 was um, number one uh, in a competition in Berlin. After 10 years, it was number one. Wow, what is that? I know you are a vegetarian, but let's try it. <laughs> because it has a lot of meaty notes for me. It's more of this desiccated red meat character it goes into it. It's a really... and also more spice, I would say, in the tan. Our wines are meeting because we have um, we are working with uh, a lot of our transport system works on vibration, mm -hmm. and so with the vibration you're getting rid of all the insects, yeah. everything's away. Okay. So no stressed shoes of the insects are in the wine, mm -hmm. so there's no need of fine. So because Rheingau is ninety percent of the people think of Riesling, I would say. So how why, why would you say that Spätburg and Pinot Noir have found its place in, in the Rhine now. Uh, there, there are evidences for that. One evidence is through the Middle Ages we had a, we had a, an average temperature which was one degree higher than today. Higher? Higher. So during the Middle Ages we could uh, plant wines in the Berlin area. Mm -hmm. It has changed after World War, after the Thirty Year War, after 1648, 1650. We had so we only had we had the so-called little ice time between 1650 and 1850, mm -hmm. and um, and Pinot Noir was being brought uh, by by monks coming from Burgundy yeah. to Rhine because they had they were coming from the monastery Citeaux, Bernardic level. Mm -hmm. This was uh, the big guy, and he has established the monastery Eberbach. Mm -hmm. And obviously, in the brief kiss, youth kiss, there was some some uh, Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. and uh, and they have planted that in Asmanshausen. Asmanshausen is an island of Pinot Noir. They had roughly 100 hectares. Mm -hmm. Before, nobody talks about Pinot Noir, and after, nobody talks about Pinot Noir. But in Asmanshausen, they talk mm -hmm. only about Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Because Asmanshausen was very special, very steep slopes, okay. seventy percent, and the secret is red slate point one. And the next point is, but, um, everybody in world is telling our uh, Pinot Noir likes to have a cool climate, mm -hmm. but hot day temperatures and cool morning hours and cool evening hours, mm -hmm. and this is the perfect climate that occurs. You have very steep slopes, yeah. so we are receiving a lot of sunshine, mm -hmm. south and southwest facing. But on the other side of the Rhine River, there is a, a hillside called Hunsrück, and they are offering shadow. Mm -hmm. So you are getting the morning sun, all in the summertime you are getting the morning sun at 8.30, mm -hmm. 8.45. Mm -hmm. Until that it's cool, you can have there's a certain need you need a sweater. But after that, it's getting extremely hot. 
and in the evening it's just turned around. And this is the point why uh, Pinot Noir grows so well there in Asmanshausen. But it's, um, it's a lot of work. Your work here, Aniko was also there, and if you're working in 60-65% steep slope, it's, um, it's not so easy. Yeah, you don't have to go to the gym afterwards. Um, <laughs> if you are strong enough, you can. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. That was the tan, right? By what I'm guessing. Wow. Do, I, do I you have a lot of uh, old vintages to, to, to be kept or to be sell? Maybe? Yeah, we have also some old vintages. And uh, this is uh, 99. Because we, um, wow, it's a lot more garnet here. I can really differentiate it. So it's a 21 year old Pinot Noir from right now. Wow, a very, very fair color I could easily see. Now, now they come in this licorice kind of characters and very this other kind of uh, vinegar in it almost. So this 99 was the first five years ago. More or less undrinkable, but it has this really great density of, of not wow. optimized 13.5 alcohol. And uh, wow, as a, as a, <laughs> it stands, it's very earthy. It is really, and really earthy. So the, the fruit just got desiccated and flummy. Mm -hmm. And it's really flam like kind of, but balsamico kind of. Yeah, 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 exactly. When you have the balsamico, not the cheap stuff, but you get the grassy, but you're missing <laughs> some barriers. <laughs> well, uh, really, but it's 21 years old, and then that, that really, sh that's from the same uh, single vineyard. It's from, from the same the plants. Vineyard. Everything is just from the same plants. Okay. And. <laughs> Okay, so I really encourage people to buy the 19s and uh, put it put on the side for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think the, the younger vintages uh, starting from uh, 2015, 2016, they will easier to achieve and they will have the same time to live. Mm -hmm. But you, you said you don't de stand the Pinot right? I don't de stand the, the Chardonnay. Okay. okay. We are doing the Pinot Noir very carefully these these valley. Yeah, this okay. is this is very this is very very important. Okay. Because I do not want to have stems in there, mm -hmm. and also our heat stemming machine is working on vibration. Okay. And this is um, confirming less than one percent little stems in there, and these will be selected out as well. So that really showed me this vertical how how a rank of Pinot Noir could age and should age. That was an experience. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> really, thank you very much. And how was maybe, how would you say that these wines could further age like a 1999? They will be stable. They have enough tenants, mm -hmm. enough soft tenants, they have enough structure. Yeah. This wine is stable in how, how it tastes yeah. the last five years, six yeah. years. Um, Last year, also during the summer, I had a, a visitor from Norway. He is the, uh, the boss of the biggest um, shop from Wien Monopolit in, in Oslo. Mm -hmm. And I opened for, for his door and for him I opened in 99. Uh -huh. And then he said, this is the very best Pinot Noir he ever had. Mm -hmm. Head and shoulders above them all. You know, I've been to... Um, I've tasted a lot of uh, German Spätburgunders, mm -hmm. so mostly from the south, to be honest, mm -hmm. from Baden and Berlin. Mm -hmm. And that was more fruit forward, but that's, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, it's more the culinary style for me. Mm -hmm. It's really more in the earth and earth and more in the uh, this one. More in the earth and earth and more in the animating kind of uh, masculine style. Mm -hmm. But all the compliments are because it's a. Uh, it's still fresh. So the 1999, it's still you have the present acidity, you have the tannin. So it's. Do you also drink uh, more burgundies? Maybe if you want to. Yeah, I, I, li I like them both. I think um, good burgundies is uh, easier to choose and to buy than um, 
good for those. I think for those, for those there's always batch, and this is not the size of my profit. Yeah. In the early 90s, I have uh, purchased um, um, 89 Umprion for 120 mark, I think okay. for 60 euros. Okay. okay. You know how 89 mm. Umprion yeah, would cost yeah, today. Sure. And, but if uh, to pay for a bottle of uh, Bordeaux, 100, 1500 mm. euros, I think this is for that we have to invest too much money in our own winery. <laughs> Yeah. But it's a little beautiful. Thank you for the sign, really. And uh, I would have a final question. Of course. If, if, when I come here, not if, when I come here back, mm -hmm. what are we going to talk about in five and ten years? Mm -hmm. We will talk about, uh, again, ageability. We will talk about um, more extremes, because um, of the corona, the new right uh, the road a little bit mm. into the ups and the downs and um, we will talk about the consumption of wine because with the demography we will have we will have uh, less people in the age where they can drink wine yeah. we will have um, more young people who are I guess will be more, much more into the into the spirits and uh, mixed drinks yeah, or whatever cocktails, and uh, we will have solos about um, transporting mm -hmm. single vineyard wines because it's too complicated. Yeah. People are stressed more and more in their business life that they do not want to study the the single vineyards. They do not. What is Bon Mar and what is Alox Coton? Yeah. I think uh, I, what is Reichstag and what is Hollenberg. Uh, I think uh, the people we will have, I'm afraid of that, people will have um, more attention to, to, um, to uh, wines which will, which will be a mark. Trademark, so Woodbridge and things like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but the single vineyard uh, vinification, what we do, is the gap in the market, and we have to we have to point that out with two hundred percent consequence. Then we will then we will still in the market. Because uh, if you imagine that a Bonnier is now higher paid in, in Moscow yeah. and Romani Conti, yeah. so this, this George Bonnier, he has pointed that out because he was very strict in his work, in his quality, and then you will get something. But um, the volume will be something else. You will, maybe we will have the chance that. Uh, German Pinot Noir is, is uh, a hided uh, secret. Mm -hmm. Like for you, you can yeah. or Riesling. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you taste the Rieslings. I could, I could show you also a, a vertical of Riesling. Yeah. But I wanted to su surprise you a little bit. Even, you even, did. The, even the, we, can, we can do Hohan Hölle in the same quality. Yeah. Totally. To up yeah. down to 90. And in terms of climate change, would you say that it will affect our business? Um, there is a lot. Many people talk about, oh, we have to, we have to change the varieties. We have to move away from Pinot Noir and from from Riesling. I think this is this is not my opinion. Why? My father would be would have been very very happy. Mm -hmm. If winter vintage is like 47, mm -hmm. 49, 53, and 59 would have came in a row. Mm -hmm. He had, of course, he had 53, wonderful, but he had 54, disaster. Mm -hmm. Think about the final uh, soccer uh, championship in Bern 
I'm very against it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my mom do I hit the goodie and or whatever. Uh, it was raining like crazy. 55, very cold. 56, the runner was frozen. 57, 57, also very cold. 58 in addition, also very cold. And then came 59. We had five vintages in a row. Nobody would drink that today. Mm. The only reason why I can imagine that uh, those wines have been drunk is that the European community was not so open like today. Mm. So the imports of Italy and, and France and so on um, were not exist in, 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 in that, in that uh, percentage. Mm. And, uh, and now with that uh, perfect market, but you know what is going on in South Africa, what is going on in Loire, what is going on in Piedmont, what is going on wherever. Yeah. And Germany is the, is the biggest import market in the world. Mm. So, yes, global warming has helped Riesling to get right every year. With, a, with an acid, with enough acid, or an acid in moderation. So what we should do, we, we should be very happy about the situation that recently is getting riper, but we, had, we have to adjust on the circumstances. That means we have, to, we have to strengthen the skin of the, of the berries. Hey, how do we do that? Not genetically. This would uh, afford too much time. Mm. But what we do is, is it's also being shown in, it's being shown in the industry. We have now leaf stripping machines like yeah. crazy. This is a big, big deal, leaf stripping machines, because you're taking away the leaves after flowering, and the skin is getting stronger and harder against the sunshine. Mm -hmm. This is one thing which is very important, and we have to. Of course, we have to harvest and uh, at the right time, and we have to select. Mm. But uh, if we would move away from Riesling, or if we would move away to other vineyards, much to the north and whatever, mm. I think um, if you have a vineyard in the right circumstances, if you have a vineyard in in the right um, correlation between animals, plants, and the plant of wine. Therefore, that you need to have your lifetime. Mm -hmm. We have to, I think it's easier to adjust on the soil what we have, on the size what we have, mm -hmm. to make it even better than to move anywhere else. And for Riesling, it's now perfect because we are now able to have a Riesling right in out of 10 years, eight times. Eight. 2013 to 2014, very, very cool. 2017 as well, cool. Nobody is remembering that. Why? Because the last two years were very hot. Yeah. People do not know how uh, the years before there. 2010, we had the earth, we had the eruption of Ayurveda Lucky on Iceland. Okay. The flower, it was cool because the, the fog, it was 100, it was 90% silicate. Mm -hmm. Was reflecting the sunshine. Mm -hmm. It was a bad flowering, a cold year. We had, mm -hmm. we had a little crop and the crop was bad. Mm -hmm. The same we had in 1980 when Mount St. Helens in, uh, in the state of Washington erupted. Mm -hmm. The same thing. So we have to stay on the ground, do our work, be carefully with a great respect, some contact to heaven. That's good. And if I may ask a controversial question. Would you also maybe go into, because you talk a lot about nature, mm -hmm. would you also go maybe in the direction of biodynamic farming in the future? Um, we have a heroism of being by that biodynamic. Mm -hmm. Nobody is asking behind that, because everybody accepts that this is wonderful, this is, these are the heroes. Yeah. They are not. Why we are not? Because we are using copper. Mm -hmm. This is a very old story. The story is 30 years old. Mm -hmm. In France, there, there are so many copper mines. And what do we want to do? We want to sell copper. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And for example, it is also this, this is a, this is not a battle. This is a war between the south and the, the north. Yeah. In the south, when it's so dry, you are allowed to pray uh, six kilo copper per hectare mm-hmm. in a dry area, and in a very humid area like Germany and Austria, where you have a lot of rainfall during the vegetation, like vegetation period, you have three kilos allowed. Mm-hmm. Hey. What the hell is that this for? And over 600 ppm per kilogram soil, mm. nothing is growing again. So for me, they are not the heroes. Mm. This is, um, you say, democracy, this is wonderful. But mafia is even better. Mm. You, have to, you have to think twice, you have to, to watch behind. I think, um, why, why, why is it allowed to, to spray a heavy metal, I think? A heavy metal, which is only protecting the plant on the on the place where the copper is is sprayed on. Phosphoric acid will be transported to the whole genes and is protecting the plant from the inside. And in addition to that copper, copper is easily washed off of the leaves. Easily. Mm. So and biodynamic these are the heroes, I think this is a big line. Excuse me. This is a big lie. I'm very honest. So thank you very much. Actually, the 14 was what my heart okay. has asked for, and it was a relief. I can I So thank you very much, and thank you for this honest interview and all this project. Thank you. you. <laughs> Did you like this episode and want to hear more? Would you recommend me a new guest or just want to get in contact? Then please leave your rating on iTunes under the channel or send me an email to the email address in the description, or contact me in the Vine Ghosts Instagram or Facebook site. See you next week and keep on enjoying the ghosts.